Hi submarine friends, welcome back to watching me and helping me build my diesel electric submarine. I say helping because I actually get some pretty good feedback into my comment section, so that's really good, I appreciate that. Anyways, I should be working on the electrical right now, but my shoulder's really sore and it's from climbing around in there. I've got a problem with my shoulder, so I just need a day off from crawling around inside the submarine working on it. But I did manage to get my LED interior lights installed and holy cow, fantastic. I cannot believe how good they work. I mean, I think I paid like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. And I got four of these strips and I just mounted magnets on them stick them on fantastic holy cow anyways so i'm working on the hydraulic drive unit so this this is the propeller 21 inch diameter 19 degree so what i learned when i did my test in white swan lake is i'm not utilizing the engine power enough so i'm not spinning the propeller fast enough so this motor is 350 rpm maximum with lots of torque crazy amount of torque but that's how it works low rpm high torque so i want to remove this motor and i want to replace it with a, a higher speed motor so this is a 4.5 cubic inch displacement, I believe. So 15 gallons a minute, 350 RPM. I don't have 15 gallons a minute. My engine won't deliver that. Not at 2000 PSI. So I'm going to switch this to a 2.2 cubic inch displacement motor. I believe it's 850 RPM or something like that, but I don't have the oil flow for that either, but I will get up to 500 rpm with my available oil flow which is perfect because that doubles what i had at white swan lake when i came home from white swan lake i put a tack on the propeller and i think i was getting 250 rpm if memory serves me so i can double that so i will get 50 pounds torque on the propeller uh, up to 500 rpm with 50 pounds torque and I think that's going to really help the speed of the sub. Now, I'm actually happy with the speed of the sub. I have to say, um, the speed was not bad. I mean, it would be better if it was faster, obviously, especially if you ever got into a current situation. But if that's all I got, I'd be happy with that. But then I'm not looking for big speed. But anyways, let's get the maximum speed we can out of it. We can always throttle the engine back. So the way this works is hydraulic motor is plugged into the stainless steel shaft which is just an old boat propeller shaft that matches that propeller and inside is two tapered bearings from a trailer axle so i just took a hub out of a trailer axle and i robbed the bearings and i machined this is actually a section of hydraulic cylinder and this end right here is like this is actually a spare so the bearings are actually mounted in this piece so I just machined both ends put the bearings in and then there's a nut on the main shaft that I can tighten to load the bear to preload the bearings so they have just a little bit of play and then I mounted uh, a lip seal to hold oil in and then I mounted uh, a water pump seal right here so that's a spring-loaded seal with a ceramic face ceramic and carbon faces so I was a little concerned because when I drained some oil out after my dive the oil was gray which means water got in but I just drained some oil out and there is no sign of water in there at all and the oil it's clear so I don't know what what I don't know if my memory is shot or what's going on so I'm gonna take the whole thing apart inspect it see what's going on because this oil looks fine 
The other concerning thing though is there should be a lot more oil in it. And I don't remember draining a bunch of oil out, but maybe I did. I don't know. I can't remember. It's been too long. So I'm going to overhaul this thing and check it out. And if I have to, I can machine this spare cap to redo this and redo the seal assembly. And to be honest, I'm not completely in love with, I just used an old hydraulic piston to make the part for the, for the uh, mechanical seal. So I have a feeling that if it's leaking, it's the interface between the, the mechanical seal housing and the bearing housing. The other thing I did is I put an O-ring seal at this end onto the shaft of the hydraulic motor so that if this ever got a bunch of pressure in it for some reason, that pressure wouldn't transfer inside the hydraulic motor. Although I think this hydraulic motor can handle the amount of pressure that it would be exposed to at 100 feet deep. I mean, that's only like 42 pounds or something. I'm pretty sure this motor could operate at, 40, uh, at 100 feet deep, but let's not try it and let's not take a chance. So that's what I'm up to today. So when I get it all apart, I will make another video and show you all the internals of this thing so it makes more sense. Ciao.